I'm more interested in the villain because, like, um, it's Dee Dee's Jim Sona. Well, I was gonna say she like moves around and just sort of has a bounciness to her that reminds you of like old Fleischer animation, like rubber hose cartoons. Yeah, it reminds. me I mean, me she of looks that like too. something outside of Cuphead. She really does. Like, she really because the way that she stretches about and like. At the beginning, she stretches, like, one of her fingers to make, like, a megaphone. She really feels like she doesn't belong. And that's sort of, like, the point. She's supposed to be something that we haven't seen before, gem-wise. By the way, I'm more excited to hear, like, what happened post-Diamond Days. Yeah. And see how everyone's adapted to the life. While, like, I understand that, like, this is a movie, not not the TV show, so there's going, it's going to be, like, a lot more linear, I guess. But the thing is, is that, like, the voice actor for Steven was sort of hyping it up to be, like, like, and it could still be, like, well, it's probably up to still the gonna, hype, but. Well, it's still probably going to be a part of the series and stuff. It's probably... It'll probably be part of the series, but it might just be a one-off story. It might just be a one-off story, but I do honestly feel like this will be, like, the next antagonist. So, like, it'll... I don't know. I sort of have the feeling that she'll just be, like, shallow enough to be, like, a one-off villain. Well, you never know. Either way, it's, like... I... I just want to just be updated and that's about it i'm not like the only thing that i'm really excited for for this villain is how she animates and see how she actually like contradicts steven on a deeper level because right now all i'm seeing is surface level and i hope they go further um, which the voice actor of Steven is hyping up to be like, oh, Steven's gonna need you to believe in Steven more than ever. Like, that sort of got me really hyped, and it sort of exceeds my, like, expectations because I thought that, like, Diamond Days was, like, the most, like, grounded way to like just go about like figuring out your identity and like I don't know it was such a great metaphor about identity that has never really been as well shown as in any other media before in my opinion because literally White Diamond almost kills Steven because of her preconceived thoughts of him and then when she sees that like she almost kills him she still tries to like go against what's actually being shown right in front of her <laughs> and like but then like when steven just like show i don't know it's something like, All right, Audrey, Mop Fox, we get it. You like Steven Universe? Yeah, I just don't know how they can trump that because now Steven is sort of just like, wow, we like now all this change is happening, but now there's resistance. How are they gonna top the whole identity thing? I he, don't know. He already got. Victory. Just to talk about the trailer a bit, um, like the way that they set it up really reminds me of like an anime movie trailer where they have like the main theme on top of like a lot of dramatic scenes. Mm. I guess move away from Steven Universe just because we've been talking about it a bit. Um, in our Cartoon Network show, OKKO, OK they just announced that they're doing a crossover episode with Sonic the Hedgehog. It's a better design than the remake. Uh, not the remake, the movie. I mean, this wasn't the first crossover OKKO OK had. I know. Remember they, the they, Captain they, Planet episode? Yeah, and they had the ghoul school stuff. And they had crossover Nexus. 
that too. I mean, is it just going to be an episode, or is it going to be a full-on, like, hour-long TV, long movie? If they couldn't get crossover Nexus to be more than 15 minutes, I doubt that this is going to be a longer than that. Yeah, but didn't we already get, like, the season finale? Something like that? Or no? Am I wrong? We got a new season. Oh, we did? Yeah. Oh, okay. Never mind. Well, I'm down a person. I guess that's an automatic lose. Yeah, that's pretty much automatic lose. I'm surprised they don't just have like a robot character. Um, just take its place until like they can fill it in. I don't know. I guess they haven't really set up AI for like Splatoon, mostly because it's like such a different and weird game. Yeah, and plus it's Nintendo, they're pretty conservative on online basics. water. Well, how about we talk a bit more about Splatoon? Have you ever played the original? Oh yeah, I have it for the Wii U and I had a whole lot of fun playing it. It's just that, like, I didn't really have anyone else playing it as well, you know? Yeah. So it sort of just went away for me. I mean, I really after enjoyed- After a month. Yeah. I really enjoyed the first Splatoon, but, uh, it wasn't until the second one where I really started to go hard in the series. Because, like, back when Splatoon 1 came out, like, events would happen and this and that would go on and I wouldn't really be, like, too, like, invested. But, mm. like, in this game, I try to get, like, highest rank in every Splatfest. I play through all the DLC, all the challenges, etc., etc. Yeah, I mean, I'll be the first one to say that I didn't know there was a story mode in Splatoon 1 until, uh, like, Splatoon 2. What? I legit didn't know that there you was You didn't a... even, like, see a trailer? What, for Splatoon 1 having a story mode? Yeah, that's, like, one of the biggest things that they advertised. I just bought the game, that doesn't mean I actually watched advertisements. Because I'm a Nintendo purist. <laughs> I don't need an advertisement to buy a game from them. I mean, the story mode was like half the original game. I heard this was Nintendo's first shot at, like, the primary focus is on... Online shooters? Online shooters. And then I just supported them in their efforts by buying the game and played it for a month with just purely online. So I didn't really know that there was, like, a story mode. You know? Yeah. Who did- did you play the final Splatfest in the last game? I honestly don't remember. That's probably a new. It's probably a no. So how about you talk about that, hon? You should final Splatfest in the last game? Like I said, I wasn't really too invested in the Splatfest. I would usually just get the first rank and then bow out. But, uh... Yeah, I guess for the final Splatfest, I chose Team Cali. Mm. What was it versus between for the topic? It was the Squid Sisters, Cali or Marie. Oh, it was just straight up Cali or Marie, not, like... Does anyone find it awkward that they're named after the deep-fried genocide of their people? Calamari. We Cali Marie. We don't talk about <laughs> that. I'll swap up my gear. It just rings well, hun. That's all you need to think about. Going with the bucket. Yeah, the bubbler. It's the slosher that shoots the bubbles. I know in Splatoon... Also, sit straight. Why? So we can make sure we get good quality on the mic. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> but yeah, um... Was I know in the first Splatoon, I always chose the roller. And then... I God, stopped I playing. forget the last time I played with the roller. Well, that... I use, well, with this game, I primarily either play with like one of the splash shot 
well, not splash hop one, like the one-handed get uh, weapons, uh, some of the sloshers. I did use the hero umbrella for a bit, but I end up swapping that out with like the undercover umbrella since like I prefer having like a consistent like shot where you can hold down the button with like a shield that protects you while you shoot. Mm. Rather than the original splat umbrella where it's like you have to hold the button to like uh <laughs> to get the umbrella and you had to like tap it rapidly to get a consistent fire. Hmm. Well I mean maybe I'll play with the hero umbrella in a sec. Well, the reason why I brought it up was because in the second, uh, in Splatoon 2, um, I started using more of the bucket type, um, weapons, so, that was my main primary, like, weapon. Yeah, what? I remember that the buckets originally came out in Splatoon 1 as DLC. Hmm. One thing that I did find weird was that, like, my favorite mode ever in Splatoon 2 was Salmon Run. And they put that during specific times. And they, do they still do that? Yeah, they swap out the rep, uh, they swap out the wep weapons, uh, each shift. Yeah, but why can't they just, like... Why does it have to be, like, you have a curfew? Well, I don't really understand, like, having times that where you can't play at all. That's kind of backwards to me. But, uh, having the random weapons, you know, sort of keeps you on your toes. I don't mind the random weapons. That That's one of the best features. I get you to experiment and, like... Oh, I thought you were complaining about, like, the swapping weapons as well. No, like, I, I honestly am not one of the complainers of that. That just means that you gotta get good with, uh... Although, to be fair, like, at this point they have it open so often that you barely even notice when it's closed. Yeah, but earlier on, it's just like, why? I don't know. Maybe next game they'll just have it open 24-7 and just do weapon rotations. Yeah. But yeah, doesn't the buckets usually, like, kill in, like, one or two, like, shots? Depends on the slosher that you use. So what does this slosher, like, be most effective as? Like, well, it's good with coverage because, you know, the bubbles bounce all over the place and bounce off of walls. Yeah. And, uh, it can be good for damage if you get, like, a straight shot. Hmm. Plus, this one comes with the uh, Rainmaker or Ink Storm. Yeah, have you ever appreciated like how well the um, like ink just looks, like as a material? I think for this one, they made it look more shiny and metallic. Yeah, I remember the first one looks sort of fake, but this one looks pretty like on point. Well, I meant for the specific Splatfest. Well. Uh, of course, for the specific Splatfest, but, like, as for, like, just in general. Well, obviously, things are gonna look better the more, you know, progression that we have. Yeah. But still, it just, it, it's just something that, like, I don't even know how to do and, like, how you can do in, like, a game engine. Because I did go to school for game art, and I'm just, like... How are they doing this on the Switch, making it look so beautiful? You know? Yeah. Like, are they using some type of... Like... 3D object polygon type stuff? Or are they using some advanced material... That isn't that, um... Costly on the processing for the Switch? All this technical stuff that... Well, to be fair, the Switch is, like, higher than the Wii U, like, specs-wise, so they were able to make it look better. Yeah, but it's not that much of a hike, you know? I don't know, maybe if you, like, look at screenshots of, like, Splatoon 2 now, and, like, Splatoon 1, you can see the difference. Yeah, I'll definitely show... Because it's easy to say, like, oh, this game just looks like Splatoon 1. 
but um, it really if you does. actually like look at side by side, you can definitely see all the differences. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of improvements. Like they definitely got more of a budget for the damn second game, with like just polish. Hmm. Like the gameplay is like yeah sure like the, all they did was add add add. But the thing is, is that... Well, they didn't just add. They rebalanced a lot of things in this one. Well, that too. Like, a lot of the special moves this time around don't, like, feel, like, super dramatic like the last game. Hmm. But yeah, all the... All the models, all the art and stuff like that, that just felt so new and fresh to me. And you can play as Octoling. That too. Like, they just added so much. And this is, like, a new type of a uh, game for like even this generation still yeah there is no game like splatoon except for creole scoot yeah but that we should play that i mean we've already played it before <laughs> recordings but i meant on recording for the audience so everyone knows that we scoot the verbs Scoot the burbs! <laughs>